Hey, it's Mike here, and today, OJ. Is it gonna murder you? Either way, it's probably not gonna end up in jail. Oh, it's been decades since that trial. But yeah, we're talking about Glucose Goddess, a nutrition influencer from France who essentially directly equates orange juice to Coca-Cola, saying they're both as unhealthy. To me, an orange juice is just as bad for you as a can of Coke. This got me curious, and while I'm completely on board and understand the issues in the literature with fruit juice consumption in general, especially these really refined fruit juices, uh, something was a little bit off with her claims, so I had to look at all of the science I could find, and we're really asking the question here, should people in the US be giving up what is likely the single main source of vitamin C in their diet? Diet. We're also gonna examine a bit of this glucose spike culture of fear. But we're gonna look at OJ from so many angles, you're either gonna be really tired of it or reaching for a glass. All right, let's go. A little bit about glucose goddess. I'd seen her little glucose charts floating around the internet. It turns out she is Jessie Inchauspe. Totally butchered that. French nutrition influencer who has a biochemistry degree. I think she was one of the first people to really get a lot of attention wearing a glucose monitor as somebody who's not diabetic, just sharing the results, getting famous that way. And then as a result, she started things like selling supplements, which she has been criticized for in terms of the claims that are made on those. The anti-spike formula, he says that it will moderate glucose spikes by up to 40% if taken before a carb-rich meal. She's essentially telling everybody that they need to go buy this $65 per month supplement, which has no evidence to support it. Many critics of her have said that she propagates pseudoscience, she advocates a method that is not supported by evidence, and the studies that she cites routinely are either anecdotal, false, completely misinterpreted, or not relevant to the things she's claiming. There are also concerns with just focusing so much on the minutia of these foods and blood sugar spikes and things like that, but in a sense, I agree with her on a lot of things. She had some good tips on you know, food combinations and perhaps vinegar and research on that for blood sugar. And as far as influencers go nowadays, honestly, she's pretty good compared to what we have out there. Got testicle meatballs. We call them meaty balls. And as far as the blood sugar spike thing goes, I agree we don't wanna be spiking our sugar really high and really long. It's not good for us, but I don't necessarily think we need to be afraid of every little spike. And I would also say that sometimes this misses the forest for the trees here because, you know, I've mentioned before, we have some glucose people like on TikTok saying, oh, here's my bacon meal. There's no blood sugar spike. And then people in the comments are like, oh my God, this class 1A carcinogen is really healthy. But let's get to where OJ claims because a biochemistry background doesn't necessarily mean that you've read all the literature on everything that you're complaining about, or whatever. So let's see what she says. Somehow we believe that if it's orange and it's fresh squeezed, then it's good for you. But if it's in a can of soda, then it's bad for you. The truth is your body doesn't care where the molecules come from. Your body just processes sugar, whatever its source the same way. Yep, she's going straight after my old friend, OJ. And this is a little bit reminiscent of the Oatly vs. Coke thing that I responded to. I have a whole video on that. I'll link below as well, but she continues. And so that's why to me, an orange juice is just as bad for you as a can of Coke because they both contain 25 grams of sugar. And she's right there. Eight ounces or a cup of either of those drinks have roughly 25 grams of sugars. But there is a quite recent, perhaps perfect study here that could give us an answer comparing soda versus orange juice. This study actually basically made fake orange juice. They used orange drank and compared that to some orange juice. I should say there was just a few extra grams of sugar in this orange drank compared to the OJ, but you can see the blood sugar spike is massively larger from the orange drink than the actual OJ itself. And if you're concerned about that carb disparity, they actually adjusted the total glucose load for each drink by the amount of carbs that they had. And yeah, it's no contest. The orange drink spiked the crap out of glucose compared to orange juice. And to be fair, it was funded by the Florida orange industry, which, you know, you could write it off entirely, but they say they weren't involved in the design of the study. But I would say, yeah, we can take that one with a grain of salt or perhaps a little squirt of orange juice. 
hopefully not in the eye, but we're not gonna rely solely on that study. Do not worry. Anyway, she continues talking about, you know, what's what about the vitamins in orange juice and sort of preemptively responding to people saying that. Now, yes, in the orange juice, there are some vitamins, but if I were to put vitamins into a can of Coke, it wouldn't make it healthy. Well, we have a study here that essentially tested this exact idea. However, they didn't use Coca-Cola. This is a study funded by the nutrition department at Brigham Young University. And they did again, make a sort of mock OJ with similar sugars, but then added ascorbic acid or vitamin C. They also compared that with two other mixtures of increasing amounts of orange based flavonoids or antioxidants. And I should mention that one of the points that glucose goddess makes is that as we spike our blood sugar, it fuels aging and disease through the oxidization of our blood from all of that glucose around there. Well, they looked at oxidation of the blood. In particular, this chart shows how well different mixtures and orange juice were able to stave off that oxidative stress. Well, to the results, the vitamin C mixture with sugar water got its butt absolutely kicked by the orange juice far left versus far right on this chart. And also for the two in the middle, more orange flavonoids meant better in terms of less oxidization. But I'll let you hear it from the researchers themselves. They say, quote, we report for the first time that fructose and ascorbic acid present in orange juice are not sufficient on their own to prevent postprandial oxidization without phenolic compounds, which are those plant antioxidants. And her conclusion just completely blasts her notion of this OJ being the same as soda out of the water. Quote, orange juice has the potential to play an important role in reducing postprandial or after meal atherogenic oxidization, that's artery disease creating oxidization and subsequent cardiovascular risk if consumed regularly. And this study echoes another point that's really important in that these isolated supplements that are antioxidants do not appear to lower disease in the literature compared to actual plant food derived natural sources of antioxidants. In most cases, this is still a bit of a mystery. So yeah, she is right in saying that adding vitamins like vitamin C to Coke is not gonna make it a health food. It, who knows if it'll make it any healthier at all, maybe a little bit, but actually getting vitamin C and these other antioxidants from actual orange juice clearly is better. So what about the epidemiology, all these nutrition researchers looking at populations? Well, is OJ showing that they have increased diabetes and all these horrible results of high blood sugar? Well, it appears that OJ drinkers have healthier profiles across the board, not only a more balanced diet, but also lower obesity and metabolic syndrome in men at least. And for a wild observation from a 2019 study, comparing people who essentially don't drink orange juice less than one serving per month to those that drink it daily, the OJ drinkers had basically half the rate of poor cognitive function. You know, half is huge, but is this just the people that already remembered to take their OJ. Are we just talking about associations here? People who drink OJ are eating healthier in general. We do know that. So do we have any trials of benefits? Well, we have this review that looked at various trials and they say that, yeah, longer term citrus consumption, including orange juice, favorably modulates the markers of type two diabetes. And to elaborate on that, we're talking about an improved fasting insulin, which is wild, as well as an insulin resistance marker being quite improved. Blood glucose has a little bit of a benefit, but they're saying that it could be a multifaceted thing. We're talking about lower inflammation, oxidative stress, artery function, all being positively affected. And they also allude to a randomized control trial in which orange juice consumption improved gene expression for both inflammation and atherosclerosis risk. And it continues to this study, which is a meta-analysis, and they admit that they need more data, but still we see a lowering in inflammation markers in studies where people are given orange juice. And there's also blood orange juice, which is like red. It likely has even more of these good antioxidants. And looking to this study, it actually improved flow mediated dilation, which is a measure of artery function, which is cool. But I'm not saying it's a perfect food. There's some pros and cons here, especially when we're talking about when you're drinking it and how much you're drinking it. First of all, there's timing, whether you're having it with or without meals. One study found that it ended up leading to more of a calorie surplus if it's consumed between meals, but if you consume it with meals, it lowers total calorie intake. And then we also have how much, like should you chug two cups? That's probably too much according to this study, which looked at actually whole orange juice versus those two cups of OJ. And the results are that both of them had essentially an equivalent 
spike. This is a lot. This is more than I drink like ever. But on the other end, there was a drop in blood sugar in that OJ group that was not seen in the orange group. Eating the whole oranges likely because of that fiber. But the body is really weird because ironically, the same study looked at whole grapes versus grape juice. And at least in terms of insulin, the spike was worse with the whole grapes than the grape juice. I don't know why. And that just brings me to that overall fruit juice issue. And I really do believe that OJ differs from these other fruit juices, like for example, straight up apple juice or like white grape juice, which are you know, even lower in antioxidants and have a lot of sugar as well. So we see from studies like this one that, that fruit juice consumption is associated with increased mortality, but Based on the better diabetes markers, the lower obesity rate and metabolic syndrome rate of OJ drinkers, et cetera, I don't think that OJ is contributing here. I would love to see a study singling it out on mortality. Anyway, in the end, all signs are pointing to, at the very least, orange juice being significantly healthier than Coke, unlike the claim that she's making. The question is, is it a health food that'll improve your health? Well, looking at studies on US populations who are of course eating a standard American diet, OJ appears to absolutely be helping with whether it's fasting insulin or weight, or perhaps even as that one study found, poor cognitive function rates being lower. You know, add that to the lower inflammation, better artery function, as well as just that jam-packed antioxidant profile that we see from orange juice. Yeah, it's probably better to eat whole oranges, but no, uh, OJ is not murdering anybody here. I'm pretty sure that OJ is one of the healthiest foods that people in the US consume as a part of a standard American diet. Now, the fact that it is very likely staving off artery inflammation after meals should be enough right there. There's nothing showing that Coke has any remote chance of doing that ever. So yeah, let me know down below what you think about all this. Do you like OJ? Are you gonna drink more or less OJ now? And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.